What is poppin' YouTube? My name is Dallas The Deal, and welcome to the uh, second, technically it's the third, but this is the second uh, recorded and uploaded Kristoff Cup being held at my house. Kristoff's not even here. Uh, I got Sean with me, and we are watching Aaron versus Colin. And we got my colors looking a little weird right now, but it'll be fine. Sean, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sean. I am a Pokemon player just like these guys. I have a top cut finish at the regionals and I don't know, let's watch some Pokemon. Alright, um, this mic is a little bit weird so we might have to speak a little bit loud. I've got it cranked up as much as possible. Uh, this matchup that we're looking at right now is Colin on the left playing Night March versus Aaron on the right and he's playing... I believe Vileplume Tauros. Yeah, I think that's what he said in there. Tauros GX, a new GX from Sun and Moon. Um, I don't know how in-depth I'm going to get with editing on this, but I might throw a Tauros on the screen here. Mm -hmm. This is an audio cue for me to do that. Um, but I might get lazy and just say nah. Uh, so Aaron is going to cut his deck. Um, I'm not sure who's going first. We totally I... saw the flip and then... Yeah, I don't know. Didn't say anything. I don't know who's going first either, but obviously in this matchup, whoever's going first is going to be at a huge advantage. Uh, Colin told me he's actually playing Maxis with Archeops and Gallade in his deck, so if he gets that out, he'll be able to stop Aaron from getting Vileplume out, and obviously if Aaron goes first, he can get Vileplume out and just prevent it. Colin from doing anything, which Night March needs, all its items. Absolutely, yeah, and I don't think that... Colin runs a hex either. Or no, he was able to keep the hex in when he put in Maxis, I believe. Yeah. And that can be huge. Just one turn of Hex Maniac and Battle Comps, then what's Tauros going to do? Yeah. Besides a bunch of damage every turn. Yeah. But it looks like he has some basics. Uh, Aaron will be drawing two from his mulligan. Um, and... Yeah, Colin must be going second, otherwise I don't know why he would lay stuff down. Lay more than one Pokemon down in Night March. But let's see what their starters are. Oh, maybe that's why. And I think that Colin drew first. Okay, so Colin is going first. Uh, he gets to get his first uh, licks in with Night March. See how many items he plays. He's got Shamans. Uh, he's playing the Mew EXs. How do you feel about Mew EX versus the uh, basic Mew that's not EX? Um, I like Mew EX in this meta because you're able to copy your opponent's attacks and that can be really huge with Tauros in play. We actually see Colin going for a single puzzle of time after Shamaning, so that's not and the passes. start he needed. Yeah. So that was a brick. Um, oh, Freeze is playing Lightning Energy as well, making me think that he's probably playing Jolteon. Ooh. So this could be a very quick match. Um... He has the first battle compressor, so he can probably get some Pokemon out, some supporters out. I saw the lightning Pokemon, but I couldn't quite tell what it is. It's got to be Jolteon. I don't know I what would else think he could play. so. There's not really much else he could play. <clears throat> it's worth noting that we're playing in the expanded format because we're getting prepared for the upcoming Collinsville, Illinois Regional. Uh, I think that's happening in, like, what, three weeks, two weeks right now? Yeah, first so weekend in March, March 4th. March 4th, onward day. Yeah. Mate. Oh, no, it's May the 4th. May the 4th? No. Be with you. It's in May, though, not March. Yeah, so in two yeah. months we get to make that joke. That's true. But it looks like he uh, threw out an entire Oddish line and then an level balled for an Oddish. Yeah, I don't know why he got rid of that Oddish if he had the level ball. Might have Rebellizer in his hand. That's what I was thinking, but still, there'd be no reason for you to put an Oddish in there. Um... Unless, yeah, I I'm sure you don't want to draw into it after you get one out. Probably don't want to draw into more, but that's. And I just said he would probably want to lay down a supporter, but uh, he doesn't play versus seeker in this deck more than likely. Yeah, he's got a sycamore in his hand, so it looks like he's all set there. And is that two zerosics that he discarded? I can't really tell. I think those are zerosics. Yeah. Which against night march can be brutal. Uh, what are AZs? I can't. Quite could be tell. AZs. Seen Ultra Ball. Uh, Probably Ultra Balling for a Shaman. Yeah. <coughs> he does not have the Forest of Giant Plants out, which is very important to this strategy. Um, it's gonna have to dig deep for one. But I think that this game is just about done because 
if you remember the puzzle of time, he put a DCE at the top of his deck. Oh, that's rough. I think his choices were like two DCEs and something else that doesn't matter, like a Pokemon or something. Yeah. So, even if Freeze misses the uh, misses the vile plume here, Colin doesn't have a lot going on. I mean, he can uh, attach a DCE and do sixty with Mew. Um. I'm sure that he would rather Sky Return that Shaman to draw later, but I don't think he really has an ability to do that. Looks like he revitalized it for an Oddish and a Gloom. Most likely gonna... He's got two Oddish on the field in case one gets knocked out. He's gonna hold on to the Gloom for next turn. Hopefully he can get a Forest and get a Vile Bloom out. Yeah. Looks like he's yeah. attacking the Mew. Doing 60 damage, which uh, does actually open him up to a Tauros GX attack right now for the knockout, I believe. Yeah. Well, exactly 180. This is exactly why he plays the Mew EX. It looks like he can copy his opponent's Tauros, and just he's going to get two prizes for this. And he saw that, so that is his GX attack. I actually forgot to put out a GX marker. I think I have one of those. Um, but that's kind of exactly why you wouldn't attack the Mew. Because now if he does 60 more... Oh, he knocks out the Mew if he does yeah, 60 more. he'll knock more. out the Mew. Uh, yeah, no Fighting Fury Belt. Um, Such a difficult play because you don't want to give him two free prize cards, but at the same time you can't just sit there with no Forest and no Vile Plume in play. We need to... Or, Colin needs to hope that his, uh, that his two prizes were pretty lit because he has nothing going on at the top of his deck right now. Yeah, I'm trying to see Looks like he's drew. got a Lysander. Uh, nope, he didn't get anything. Lysander and Lampent and Versus Seeker. Oh, oh no, got... he got a Battle Comp and a Versus Seeker. Ooh, so this could be good if he manages to survive the turn without Vileplume getting out. Exactly. Thank you very much, Colin, for showing us your uh, for showing us your hand. I hope they can't hear us right now. We are like two rooms away, so I don't think he can hear us. Uh, Freeze is sycamoring, looking for the Forest of Giant Plants. He probably has one. I can't imagine him not having one after playing two Sycamores. Oh, but actually, he might seen not. It. Yeah, he would have waited down it before now, the Shaman. I haven't seen one, yeah. It's gonna, he doesn't play... I don't know how many Shamans he plays. Uh... You know, honestly, this could be exactly what Colin needed. Uh, Freeze is going to take the two prizes on the Mew EX this turn. But if Colin can... Battle comp out to or a lampent and probably wants to go a get a sycamore because he had two or three night marchers in his hand as well, so that'll put some into the discard. I also think he had a DCE as well. Yeah. So he's gonna be able to kind of just hit. Ooh, the we actually face. see the bundle be in Aaron's hand right now. That's that could be interesting come late game. So even if he doesn't get the bio plume out, Colin's gonna have to. Be wary about how much of his deck he goes through. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, alright, so now... Colin is able to, uh... To start playing some cards here. Uh, Maybe that's what he plays the lightning energies for. He can put one on the bundle bee and he's able to get his double color list back. Since he plays float stones on his vile plumes. Oh, so you don't think he runs the Jolteon at all? He, he might. I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't. But I could also see him just playing a basic energy uh, so that he doesn't have to commit a double colorless if he wants to shuffle him back in. Because obviously with his deck, he's not able to play special charge. That's very true. Uh, and I'm blocking this, our screen right now so I can bring up the six prizes list that I believe Freeze is uh, basing his deck off of. Um, let's see... Think that this is the wrong deck. Yeah, here we go. Ooh. Having some technical difficulties right here, but we can see everything. Um, so let's take a look at this list and see what Freeze is probably playing. Um, Let's see. Yeah, the deck no, calls for two have, Pidgeots. This yeah. one doesn't have uh, Vile Plume in it. Oh, this is just the Garb list. Tauros Vile Plume. Here we go. Okay, yeah, so it does probably play one... I know that he has a Jolteon, so he probably... 
I didn't see it in his deck, so I do wonder if it's prized. It very well could be, yeah. Um, he looks like he does have another shape, <coughs> too. So he'll be able to... Oh, no, he's got all three of them on the bench now. Okay, never mind. Looks and, like... all right, so Colin is playing his second Battle Compressor of the turn. Uh, we can go back to full screen this. And you can see there's no zero six in there, so it looks like it was two AZs two that AZs. he got rid of earlier on that Sycamore. No AZs, and also no item lock as of yet to make those AZs worth it. He does have the float stones on them so that he can't just get Lysander and stalled out. Yeah. Um, that could be brutal late game if he wants to AZs his Shamans off the field. I know that Colin plays a megaphone as well. Looks like he's compressoring right now, so compressoring the Galades and some pumpkins and some stuff. He's got an is that an eight down on the on the die? Does that mean he's doing eighty or he's got eight guys in there? Uh that means he's got eight Pokemon in there. Okay. Actually that's a six. I think I see a um a dot on the bottom for six instead yep. of nine. Yep, you're right. Yep, and eight is on the uh bottom there. Yeah. Ultra Ball. Looks like he gets a shame and he's going to go through as much of his deck as possible because he knows that even without Forest, Vioplume can come out on the next turn. And it is worth noting that he has a Jirachi in his hand. So next turn, all is not lost either. Um, as long as he can get a bunch of Pokemon in the discard. Uh, which... Does he play promo Jirachi? No. Okay. He does not. Um... That would be... I'm not sure how I feel about that in Expanded uh, yeah. Night March. I'm not even sure how I feel about a Maxi's engine in Expanded Night March, but it looks like Colin whiffed the DCE. I think the Maxi certainly has an argument now with Decidueye coming out as well as Tauros, two things that are both hit really hard by Archaeops and Gallade, respectively. Sure. But I'm not sure if Night March needs to have them in in its deck. Yeah, um, I definitely think for Decidueye more than anything. Yeah. Um, but what's your opinion of the Decidueye deck? Do you think that it's uh, competitively viable? Would you bring it to a tournament? I think it has potential. I think it might take a bit for lists to really get the to get completely set and to get the perfect one down, but I definitely do think it has potential, and I've heard good things about it. I actually see... Colin parallel one of his shamans away. And he versus Secret for a Hex Maniac. And then he passed. He didn't look like he didn't draw a double, huh? Yeah, and he discarded his Jirachi. See the forest come down, but a little too late for Aaron. <laughs> and he still only has six Pokemon in the discard. Aaron AZ's a shaman. With a very large hand, it looks like... Oh, he's got an Ultra Ball, so we might see the Vileplume finally come out. I think we are. We might also see him go for another Tauros, so because he's only got one in play right now. Oh, he goes oh, for the Jolteon. The Jolteon, Jolteon is very important in this matchup. Colin does play the Ranger if it comes down to it, but he does only have six Pokemon in the discard. He is two-shotting these Tauros. Oh, and he's got... You said he has the Drachi in his hand? He does not have the Drachi. Oh, he doesn't No, he discarded okay. it with a, with an Ultra Ball. Okay. Um, so he won't be able to go get it next turn? No, no. He's got... His hand is a Hex Maniac and a Juniper. Ooh, Aaron's got two Vile Plumes. That is excessive. <clears throat> but I suppose if you had to play the Revitalizer and get two Pokemon... We do know Colin took the Hex last turn, so I wonder if we're going to see a Hex Ultra Ball this turn. Top deck's a Fury Belt. He's only got three cards. All right, so he Junipers away the Hex Maniac and the Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, that a there's double. An so he's energy. Gonna attack. Um, I sorry. think you got to lay down the Mew and the double here and pass and let him go down to two prizes. Um. Well, we did see him draw teammates. Yep, so... So he'll be able to go get an energy next turn. He'll be able, if he wants to... Oh, it looks like he doesn't even lay the mute on. He just passes. That is interesting. Well, with the teammates, you're getting a Dimension Valley and something else. Um, oh, he doesn't have the Dimension Valley. That's right, he can't attack. Maybe an N? I think, he, yeah, you probably grab a... 
I don't know if he played... Yeah, he has an N in hand, actually, so I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I think that uh, this might kind of free it up. Oh, no, you grab a Lysander. Yep, you... Uh, that's what you do. You teammates for an energy and a Lysander. To go get the Jolteon? Uh, oh, no, it looks like you have to take the D value here, because otherwise you can't attack. Yeah, if you had more Pokemon in the discard. <clears throat> I think you have to take a Dimension Valley and an N here. So that sets you up to be able to... Well, he has an N in hand. Well, he has an N. He can actually... What he wants to do then, I think, is take a Dimension Valley and a Night Marcher. So then he'll be able to attack the Tauros on this... Oh, he's just going to play the N. Alright, so I was going to say he would want to take the Dimension Valley and a Night Marcher, so he'd be able to attack with Pump Kaboo this turn, and then on the next turn he'd be able to promote the Mew and N Aaron down to 1, and the Mew would also survive any attack from Jolteon. Yeah. So you would take two prizes off the Toro, survive an attack, and you'd probably want to hope that you hit a Lissandre to go get a Shaman. But it does not look like Colin is going for that. But yeah, I don't think that... Uh... I don't think he plays... I don't know how many Shaman he plays. Probably three, right? I hope it's three. Colin? Yeah. At least three. Probably three in a Jirachi, yeah. And we know there's one in the discards who's probably only got one left in deck. Hopefully. If any, it could be prized. All Ooh, right. And that's not what he needed. Three items <coughs> and a Joltik. Yeah, none of those are a... Dimension Valley. But maybe you just let him knock out this Pumpkaboo. Attaching to that Pumpkaboo was pretty rough. Yeah, it looks like... Hmm. Not much you can do from Colin here. Now, at what point do you try to just... Uh... Oh, is Tauros' Retreat 3? I believe it is. Yeah, I think so. He's just going to knock out the Tauros, and it looks like he's going to pass. Oh, he's got the teammates, so he could... Why you promote the Joltik? Grab that. I don't know why he promoted the Joltik. Um, I suppose it doesn't really matter at this point. Because um, if he attacks with the Mew, it's going to be able... He's, he'll be able to take the knockout on Mew regardless. Mm -hmm. And he's only got 160 in the... Uh, do it for his Night March right now. Yeah. I don't think there's a card he could take. Looks like for the most part, Aaron's got this pretty well wrapped up. You know, if uh, if Colin was playing Professor Kukui, he could take a knockout right here and then get knocked out by a Jolteon for the for the win. But at least it would be more dignified than what's about to happen. <laughs> and there you yep. have it. There is round one. Aaron beats Colin pretty handily. Um, I'm not sure what our next matchup is, but stay tuned and find out. I should have these going up, you know, every day or so for the next couple days. Thank you very much, Sean. I'll see you out there. All right.